One, comb. Mother doesn't understand your faith in the way you comb hair. It is gentler than what I'm used to. The hairbrush's teeth sinking just enough to rake through the thick of it without scraping too hard on the scalp. Tangled parts are carded through with patience, never forcing it to unravel in one or two passes. The purpose of a comb is to usher the strands back into alignment. You would say more to my hair than me. Rough tugging would only cause more frizz and dryness. One could almost hear mother's cough. But right now, it's summer vacation, and for the next few weeks, we will stay with you in this house where you live, kilometers away from the house I live. This was the only gentle thing I knew you could do with your hands back then, aside from cleaning our ears and brushing our teeth. You had the habit of hastily pocketing tenderness back where it came from after exposing it to the world. My neck muscles still tense up as a reflex to keep my head in place against the force of the comb's motion, despite you displaying no threat at all. 2. Floor It is a Sunday afternoon. People lie down to sleep away the heat of the 3 o'clock sun. My brother sits on a plastic chair by the screen door, the rest of his body shrouded by a barber's cape save for his head. Earlier that day, Mother couldn't help but notice how long his hair had gotten, and how much of a bother it would be for the incoming summer. So here she was, bending this way and that, cutting and shaving and brushing at his hair. Both of their backs would ache after the hair-cutting session, so I offered to sweep the floor where his discarded locks lay in heaps. In the powder room, he worriedly scans this change in the mirror, rubbing a palm over his head in self-reassurance. 3. Sink. There was not so much hair as there was color. We realized too late that we bought the hue slightly off from the one grandmother uses currently, making the difference between the two brands more obvious. There seemed to be more red in this one, leaning more towards wine rather than the usual Baracco coffee brown. A washroom in the house is never without toothbrush with its blackened bristles. And I'd like to think that guests who use the bathroom and the ground floor often quiz themselves about the origins of this strange substance. With one hand pressed on the edge of the sink for support, she uses the other to stir the mixture with the brush before painting it on her hair. Lunch, then, would consist of us sneaking glances at the way her hair looked too disciplined, lying flat over her head, its dampness making it shine slightly under the lighting. Gone were the patches of silver from the day before. 4. Trash What does my hair smell like? I wince as a joke before telling my mother that it smells just like her ginger shampoo. I ask her why her hair shines like so. Is it oil? Or perhaps she's just gone out of the shower and tied her hair up despite it still being damp? She does not answer, so instead, I comment on her white hair, about how it peeks out from in between the dark brown ones. To her, dyeing it was simply out of the question. Pull it out, please. Carefully, I single out the white strand from the other dark brown ones. Her hair is odd and slippery to the touch, so it requires extra effort to pluck it out. I'm all too familiar with the feeling of strands of hair being pulled from the scalp, quick as an ant sting, and yet you still feel the way it uproots itself from underneath the skin. You wouldn't even feel the emptiness of a single strand, let alone see much difference, and yet you know something has been subtracted from you. I handle the thin thing like you would a thread, and place it on her open palm. Throw it away, she says. So I do. The garbage collectors would come the next day, but tonight we would bundle up and tie the trash bags closed. With it, the tissue papers, cardboard cores, and white hairs.